The following program is the work of the broadcast students at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. BCIT Magazine features news stories from around the Lower Mainland which were produced over the last week. Responsibility for the content of the show rests completely with the students and their instructors. Coming up on BCIT Magazine. Looking forward to a beach fire this summer? The fight over what is considered art. And what will summer camps look like for BC kids? Welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Justin Park. And I'm Robert Holden. Let's see what's been happening in our community this week. Under the ban of indoor dining, restaurants without patios are suffering. Other food businesses are feeling the strain as well. Our reporter Aaron Rempel takes a look. Fine dining restaurants aren't the only ones feeling a loss of revenue from the indoor dining ban put in a week ago. Smaller establishments that have a longer wait time for goods like Hills Bakery are seeing lowered customer traffic. Employees have taken note. There's a sushi restaurant beside us, and lots of customers will come in after that or before, before they go for dinner. So definitely with the restaurants closed, it's affected us. The possibility of a longer indoor ban than three weeks won't help in future. Wastage is also a concern. Uh, we're a wholesale bakery as well. Like we sell at Brown Williams to do wholesale. Um, so it would definitely affect our orders. And just like we might make too much one week. According to the head baker, the indoor ban a week ago is too much. Much unnecessarily hurting businesses. I don't think restaurants are the problem. And it's putting a lot of people out of work. Despite the turn of events, there are resources available for establishments like Hills. The BC Restaurant and Food Association has been working to help get grant applications through to the BC government. There is a recovery grant program up to $30,000 and there's also a technology grant program that probably they both could get. These grants are ideal for business as they are non-taxable and do not require payback. For establishments like Hills, money from grants could be a saving grace. Um, we can help facilitate their access, because we know that as small business, there's, they're, they're doing everything to keep the doors open. For BCIT Magazine in Burnaby Heights, I'm Aaron Rempel. BC health officials are sounding the alarm as more young people are ending up in the ICU due to COVID-19. Dr. Bonnie Henry says a rising number of 20 to 50 year olds are needing critical care now more than ever. Beach fires are a hot way for Vancouver Island residents to enjoy spring and summer, but the pandemic has sparked a difficult decision for one island community. Reporter Justin Waddell has more. Marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers and s'mores. Throw in some acoustic guitar and a beach fire and you'll have a nice night at Goose Spit in the Comox Valley. Being able to go onto the beach and have a fire, it's true, it is a, it is a wonderful thing that we have the option to do on most years. Normally around this time of year, you'd see lots of fire pits up and down the beach along and behind me for people to enjoy. However, this year, because of COVID-19, that's going to be a little bit different. The fire program was cancelled this year by the Comox Valley Regional District in an effort to stop gatherings and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Beach fires inherently draw people together. And um, although people can, you know, gather right now with, uh, with groups of 10, that could change in, in the future. However, some argue the decision removes an important way to socialize this year. It would just be a, a safe, easy, enjoyable way for us to still gather. We need more of those. We need as many options for people so they can actually gather safely. Visitors are still allowed to bring propane barbecues and hibachis to the beach for cooking. The big difference is that the beach fire program involves us actively installing the fire rings. So by us actively doing that, we're, we're inherently taking on liability for that and it would make us, uh, there would be a duty for us to care for that. Some argue that the fire program could have been used for families living away from each other to gather together in a safe way. 
family, such as Bowman's daughter. It would have been a nice way to um, get together with Amanda and she could probably bring some of her friends as well. So then we'd be able to meet more of her friends in a, in a safe setting. The fire program will be canceled for the rest of the 2021 season. The CBRD hopes the marshmallow roasting will return in 2022. Justin Waddell in the Comox Valley for BCIT Magazine. A man who was charged with setting fire to a Masonic Hall in East Vancouver has been charged with two other counts of arson. The Crown alleges on March 30th, Benjamin Coleman set fire to three temples in the Lower Mainland. Coming up after the break, what exactly is a non-fungible token? And how college athletes are planning for their futures. Welcome back to BCIT Magazine. It's been a difficult journey for many student athletes during the pandemic. Our reporter Miko Cridland sat down with an athletic advisor to talk about how this year has impacted many collegiate sports. There's no doubt it's been a difficult year for many student athletes in grade 11 and 12. Around this time, many student athletes would be preparing to choose their university they want to attend and play for. But with the recent outbreak of COVID-19, the recruitment process has been difficult. Today, I'm joined by athletic advisor, Sean Tracy from Burge Prospects. For those that might not understand, what does the recruitment process mean? Well, what my company does is that we start with the division one schools, and then we work through division two, II, division three, the junior colleges, to, and, and, and give them an introduction to what, to the athlete. So how has the impact of COVID-19 impacted the future of these student athletes? COVID has basically closed down the whole um, recruiting process because people don't know how long it's going to, to last. Prior to the pandemic, many student athletes were getting scouted through ID camps. With those ID camps not happening anymore, how are they getting scouted now? General overall picture, there's probably about, I'll say 1,500 schools per sport. So when you think about 1,500 contacts, it's in a huge abundance of work. That's where my service comes in and takes, it takes that right off, it takes that whole like pressure from parents and athletes right off the table. I'd like to take the time and thank Sean Tracy for joining me today to talk about how COVID-19 has impacted student athletes and their future. Most people have heard of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but there's a new technology that could revolutionize the way we own things. My co-anchor Justin Park explains how. When it comes to art not painted on walls, but online, what stops others from copying somebody's hard work? NFTs or non-fungible tokens are looking to become the solution by using the technology of a cryptocurrency known as Ethereum. So how does it work? It's a method of being able to prove the authentication of something. So this is the only version of this to exist. Um, so these couldn't be recreated. Like these original photos, you can track where they came from and who they belong to and how much they were bought and sold for. If NFTs are for proof of authentication on a digital piece of work, then what causes so many of them to sell for such high prices? There are people that you know IRL that like live next door to me that are asking me how to mint NFTs now just wow. because they want it for the money. So right. I think just people are seeing the price tag and they want to get involved and they're spreading it everywhere. Even if people are buying NFTs as an investment rather than for its intended purpose right now, artists and creators seem to be okay with it. In this last month, I probably 10x what I would have made traditionally. Small artists and creators are already benefiting largely from this NFT surge. So what might happen when this gains more mainstream adoption? I see it in real estate. I see it in logistics. I see it in travel. I see it in um, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality experiences. NFTs seem like they have the power to revolutionize many industries. But how long will it all take to happen? 
when industries change, it's not because the current model is wanting a change. It's because of disruption. So I think the only way for that, that concept that I just proposed to happen is when independent artists start trail, sorry, start trailblazing in that direction. Right. Justin Park, Vancouver for BCIT magazine. Vancouver's nonpartisan association is named John Cooper as the mayoral candidate for the 2022 municipal election. Cooper is currently a member of the Vancouver Park Board. Landowners in downtown Vancouver are changing zoning classes in an effort to save on property taxes. Ethan Johannes has more. These Vancouver lots valued at over $40 million are able to save hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in property taxes by switching to Class 8 zoning while they wait for development. These empty lots can be filled with gravel for $1,300 and called a community dog park. I think the important thing to note is that in most cases it's usually temporary in that you know, you'll get properties that are acquired for future development purposes and then uh, you know, maybe while they're going through rezoning or if they're waiting for the right time to actually start building, you know, this is something that, you know, if, if they understand the legislation well enough, um, you know, are able to, I guess, put the right type of usage in place uh, to meet the requirements for a park or a garden that's open to the public. The story broke news back in 2019, but it's only gotten easier on these Class 8 properties. In 2018, the provincial school tax was 2.5% and it dropped to 2.3 in 2019 and has a significant drop in 2020 to 0.7%. In recent years, these properties have dropped in assessed value. So when you get into that type of market, I would say that for this year, like the 2021 roll year in particular, I think a lot of those are down and a lot of the, the, the sales activity for larger development sites like this, um, you know, I think, you know, whether you want to attribute it to, to COVID um, or the market in general, it just wasn't very strong. I think there's a lot of risk associated with large developments like that. Brian estimated that of the 24,000 Class A properties in BC, less than 100 are using this clever loophole. With the market in its current state, the market value of these properties will continue to grow while investors can increase their profits by paying less taxes. Municipalities like Vancouver have estimated to lose $2.8 million a year because of this. In Vancouver for BCIT Magazine, I'm Ethan Johannes. The Capture Photography Festival, which showcases art on billboards, has begun in Vancouver but some exhibits have already seen backlash. My co-anchor Robert Holden has more. Spring has arrived at the Arbutus Greenway, but last week you may have noticed something different besides the urban gardens and cherry blossoms. Billboards featuring photographs of people sleeping line the path as part of an art exhibit by the Capture Photography Festival, but public complaints caused the billboards to be taken down after only 48 hours. Some people found, found them scary, some people said their children were terrified. The response was extremely swift and <laughs> extremely strong. Many residents said the subjects appeared to be dead. The photographs were by local Vancouver artist Stephen Shearer. A statement from the Capture Festival website said the images offer a provocative and public commentary on the ways in which banal moments are often shared for public consumption. Could thought-provoking artistic expression affect property values in a market that's currently red hot? What are the experts saying? They don't see direct correlation between property values and a billboard like this, even if the initial plan was to have those billboards up for a few months. On an average listing, if it's priced well, we're looking at maybe 10 to 15, even sometimes up to 20 and 25 offers. You find this perfect property, but it just happens to be across a billboard, like one of those billboards. Would that deter you? Whatever the source of the complaints, the Capture Photography Festival remained disappointed. It would have been great if we had some space to have a bit of a dialogue around the artist's intent, you know, maybe some more constructive conversation before the billboards were taken down. And that's just what they'll do. Wall says the festival plans to host a town hall on Instagram to discuss the balance between the concern for artistic freedom and how we engage with art that makes us uncomfortable. The Capture Photography Festival runs until April 30th. Robert Holden with BCIT Magazine, Vancouver. If you have any questions regarding the show, you can contact us at bcit-broadcast.com or bcitnews.com. Thanks for tuning in to our final BCIT Magazine show of the school year. I'm Justin Park. And I'm Robert Holden. Enjoy your summer.